pleased to present Austin Faith Dialogue, brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. One of the exciting issues, and indeed stressful issues, facing our community, our society, and we're going to look at it from the worldwide perspective, that of fatherhood and parenting and the relationship between a father and his family. Stay with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. You've read about it in your paper. You've talked about it at your dinner table. You maybe have had discussions about it in your local faith community. And on television, there have been forums discussing the role of parenting and fatherhood. I'm delighted to introduce to you our viewing audience of Austin Faith Dialogue. Three residents of our community are going to discuss with us that issue of parenting and fatherhood. On my left is Don Zapone, who is executive director of Austin Child Guidance Center. And Jenny Malo is a senior at Reagan High School, uh, having been accepted to Texas Tech University to continue her studies there. And Jiwoo Abdullahi is from Sierra Leone and is a sophomore at the University of Texas in the area of electrical engineering. And to the three of you, I have the privilege to say welcome to Austin Faith Dialogue and to our viewing audience. We're glad you're here. And, you know, this issue of fatherhood and parenting is really close to my heart, personally, as a, as a father of five children, also as a parish pastor. And I sense, as I listen to people, as I observe our community, that, that there have been lots of changes and there are a lot of stresses that are part of uh, the life of being a father. Don, uh, what about you? And you reflect on your father. Uh, my father's still alive. Is your father still alive? Right. He's, he is. He'll turn uh, 80 next year. Mm -hmm. Right. The 30-year difference between us. What about that? Uh, you think about your father and then you think about your parenting. You have three children. What are some of the changes you've seen? Mm -hmm. Well, when we were growing up, um, my father was the, was the single breadwinner. Um, my mother stayed home and so there was lots of hours. My father had his own business with his brothers and spent lots of time in, in, in the work setting. But he was always present, though, in the home. I mean, he would be there at the dinner table and so forth. Uh, um, you know, we're of Italian extraction, and so uh, there was a sort of an authority to the to the home, but 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 not an abusive kind of one, but but just a real structure, and I think that was very very comforting, and I and I think that has carried over into me. I mean, I make it a point to be home at the dinner time and so forth, and to be a presence in the home because I think that's real important. Part of the um, important expression of fatherhood then is to be a presence, and yet the reality is in our society today there are many fathers who can't be that presence, and mm -hmm. and what does that do? How does that? Uh, how does that play out in family life if a father can't be a presence? Right. Well, I think it plays out in, in two ways. Uh, one, it's, it, if the father isn't present, then, then the children lack that role model. They, they don't see that, that particular uniqueness of, of the father in the home. And then secondly, it's a real stress and strain on the mother because then the mother has to bear this burden of trying to raise the children alone and, and uh, um, you know, having to wrestle with and struggle with all the the daily decisions of how to best raise kids and so forth, and not having this spouse around to bounce ideas off of and get support. And so I think that the absence of the father uh, you know, impacts two ways, both on the children and the mother. Mm -hmm. Tony, how about your uh, family life? Your father uh, has been at home. Uh, you mentioned before the program started that he's done some traveling. Mm -hmm. What is uh, your observation of, as a, as a young woman, as a person who is now leaving high school and going out to college, what's your uh, observation of family life and the role of a father in a family? Um, a lot of the times my father, um, he works late and he doesn't get home. I don't see him a lot and we don't have a designated dinner time. But it doesn't really matter because I think the best thing is that you live in a house and you know that your father's around sometime. He'll be home eventually. He'll be there when you go to bed and if you ever need him, he's there. And it's just knowing that they're around. It's not that you need to see them constantly. It's just knowing that when you want them, you can get them, and it's not just the third weekend of the month or mm -hmm. something like that, that he's there whenever you need him. And um, it's, he's been, my father and I are a lot alike, and um, it's, in me, I see 
you know, a lot of him and how he's been real important in my life and creating my personality. And so uh, having him around has, has helped develop myself and my personality. What do you see in friends of yours? Um, do all of your friends have the father around who's available to them? Or what do you see in teenagers whose fathers aren't there? What are some of the struggles from the youth point of view of a dad isn't there? A lot of my close friends, uh, their parents are still together. And um, they, we, we all are a lot alike because we do have our parents around. But my friends whose father is not there for whatever reason, um, they're a lot closer to their mother, which is one thing. And it doesn't seem to be it seemed to have lost the parenting role at certain times that it's more of of a friendship and um, that's not necessarily a bad thing but I think it's lost a lot of the directional um, aspect of parenting that they're just there as a friend and not um, really guiding them now Jenny we didn't even plan you to say that you know that's beautiful I like what you said these kind of spontaneously came from you because it leads me right to Jiwoo I promised our viewing audience that we're gonna go around the world and you, my friend, uh, are going to be the one who's going to take us around the world because you grew up, now you're a sophomore at the University of Texas, Jiwoo Abdullahi, and you grew up in Sierra Leone, a uh, country on the west uh, part of Africa. And you had said to me before the program started that one of the things that you experienced as a child was the fact that uh, your dad was a force, a direction in your life. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, my father uh, was kind of the leader and um, I was the follower, you know, and uh, if I made mistakes, he told me, son, you don't do it this way, you go that way, you know, and, well, sometimes when I needed help, he was always there. When I needed advice, my dad was there to do it for me. I, I like what you said to me uh, before the program started. Uh, I called Jiwoo Emmanuel, uh, that's his middle name, and I really like that, Emmanuel, but he prefers Jiwoo, so we'll call him <laughs> Jiwoo, but I, I really I think it's important for the viewing audience and, and Don, for you and Jenny to hear this, this story because Jiwa said that uh, his dad would give him lots, he's the firstborn son, mm -hmm. okay, as an older sister, but that his father would give him so much direction and that sometimes when his father wouldn't say anything, he'd kind of be looking over his shoulder waiting to hear whether his father said, now wait a minute, son, <laughs> you're going the wrong way. There's that kind of freedom your father had also that he could be very directive. Yeah, he could be very directive, you know. Whenever I did something wrong, he'll tell me. What, what you did wasn't right, you know, this is what I expect of you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I did something wrong, he just let me go, you know. What did you feel like then, when, when he let you go, when the father didn't say anything? And what, what was going on within you at that time? It was sometimes terrifying. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, because you always look over your shoulder to see when he's going to come out and tell you what, that, what you have been doing. It was just not right. Do you think, Don, here we have this fine young man, you know, from Sierra Leone. Uh, do you think it's kind of an international uh, rule uh, that youth look for guidance from their parents? Right, right. I think youth look for, for two things from their parents. One is they, they look for, you know, a, a place of safety and nurturing and comfort and so forth. But they also look for a place of boundaries, of, of limits. You know, they, they realize that, that, that they need that kind of security, too, that, that um, it's real important that, that there be rules in the household and, and, and a, it, a sense of order instead of chaos. So I think both those things are, are real important for parents to give. And, and generally, the mothers tend to, to be the nurturing, comforting side, and the fathers tend to be more of this setting the boundaries and the limits and, and the rule setting. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that that's, that's real important. Now, now, that's a parent talking. Jenny, Jiwoo, do you agree with Don on that? Is, that? is that true or is that just a stereotype? Is that still really true, that, that image of the mother being the, uh, the comforting, uh, nurturing type and the father being somewhat the um, putting down the parameters? Yeah, do you think it's true or is that changing? Um, in my household, I, it, it's whoever's around more. Um, if father's around when something happens, he usually calls the shots. Um, but now if the father isn't in a household, it's usually the mother that has to do the comforting and d laying down the law. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when you have two parents there, the father, he does generally tend to take that role. Um, th I mean, of course, they're always going to switch and, you know, do role reversal. But it, it tends to be the father that does, you know, decide what's too much or, or where the limit is. I, I'm fascinated by ethnic uh, backgrounds and, and influences upon our lives. 
I was raised by a mother and father who both Swedish in background, both mm -hmm. Swedish Lutheran type people, and on their parents the same way. All right, you Italian. Well, and my mother's German, so. Ah, that's <laughs> interesting. And Jenny, you're you're German, German in background, yeah. and frequently, if I'm not mistaken, in those types of uh, ethnic backgrounds, uh, would. Uh, the papa be in charge. Uh, the German, uh, would the father would be in charge, and in the Italian home, would it be that way? Right, same way. Right, exactly. I think you know the difference between the Italian and German I saw growing up is Italians tend to be much more expressive, and the Germans are much more reserved. And so, you know, the joke I tell people is that I tend to talk with rigid hand movements. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great for television, rigid hand movements. Right. How about in in, in uh, Africa, in your home, growing up in Sierra Leone? Uh, would it have been that way also that the the nurturing element was the mother? The mother it was always nurturing, and the father laid down the laws, you know. And usually, like when I was a young kid, I I was always with my dad, buddy, buddy. And uh, as you get older, things start changing, and your dad starts uh, expecting you to lead mm -hmm. the family. And in because as you get older, your dad gets older, and he expects you to go to be the leader of the family. Kind of Jiwu, that generational thing of the fathers preparing to pass on that responsibility okay. of leadership. Uh -huh. Don, these kids are great, aren't they? They mm -hmm. raise really some issues. What about right. the role of leadership in the family then? Right. Uh, how does a father in this society, with the stresses that these fathers who are watching Austin Faith Dialogue have, mm -hmm. how can they provide that type of... Uh, in an agrarian society, it was different, but now we have this... Uh, information age. How, right. how does a father provide that leadership? Right. Well, I think on the positive side, the, the changes that we've seen over the last 30 to 40 years in terms of the mother being seen more as an equal in, in, in carrying out the, the, the leadership role in the family. So, so that's, that's been a positive sign. But in, in a sense, it's also opened up some, well, well, who's really in charge now? If there's a conflict, how do we handle that? And so it's real important for this continuing dialogue to take place between the parents and, and cooperate and, and come to some common understanding. In fact, that, that I think is one of the most important things, that the, the, the parents, whether the, whether the father's absent or were present in the household, still have to come to some common agreement. How are we going to raise these kids? You know, what are going to be the rules of the house? Because it's very easy for kids to, to you know, split and divide and and so forth and so I think that's that's a, a real important issue that, that there be a common agreement among how to raise the kids. What I hear you saying and I, and I really would agree that even if the father is not in the home mm -hmm. uh, if the marriage has been split mm -hmm. that the adults have to come to some sort of exactly. understanding that our task and our responsibility is to to raise these children right, right. and that we have to have a common uh, understanding of how we're going to do that. Right because there's still going to be you know, who goes when, where, and to what household, and if, if the mother disciplines the child for one, maybe the father might have to carry out the discipline because of the way the, the arrangements are made. So you're right, there, there still has to take place cooperation, whether it's in the marriage state or, or they're not in the marriage state anymore. That's real important. Kind of a spirit of, of consistency, even though maybe the marriage itself is not a, a, a living relationship right. because of the children. And I think we could probably say that as something we want to encourage those who watch this program that if they are in the family relationship, if the father and mother are together, but even if they're separated, that they need to, for the sake of the children, mm -hmm. have that kind of sense of understanding of our responsibility. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite stories, and G and I both love sports, and my favorite stories is about Joe Paterno. Mm -hmm. It's almost heresy to talk about Joe Paterno here in Austin, Texas, you know, <laughs> with the Longhorns and all that, but <laughs> Joe Paterno said that his father, Italian home, mm -hmm when he would come home every day at dinner table, and see, this is the problem we have is finding time for dinner. You mentioned right. you try to make it a rule. Mm -hmm. But his father would always say to the children, what'd you learn today in school? Mm. And if they'd say, oh, I didn't learn, he would push them and push them and push them until they would start talking about what they learned in school. Gee, well, I think that's the kind of leadership maybe that you're talking about with your father in the effort of uh, providing his son to recognize that the coming responsibility that would be a part of life. How else besides at the dinner table can a uh, father encourage his uh, kids to, uh, to take over leadership, prepare them for leadership? You have an 18-year-old. Uh -huh. Right. Teach right. him how to drive the car? <laughs> well, that's one of the common uh, modern-day things we have to do for our kids. But I think it's real important for, for both parents to understand that when that child is born, it's always a process of the child moving away. You know, we think when this child is given to us that, oh, we're going to hold on to that child but it really is a process of letting go mm. and, and just to remember that that in its stages and, and 
you, you have to treat the 18 year old obviously different than the six year old that, that the five or six year old you have to make you have to take their hand across the street and so forth but it, and I think that's the hardest thing I'm dealing with is how do you let go and hope that the messages that you've tried to give them through that through that life period to stick and hold on to now we want to come back we're gonna take a break and when we come back from the break I'd like you guys Jiwoo, Jenny to talk a little bit about that as youth how can a father help you in that process of, of letting you go to move on into your adulthood Stay with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472 7627 because serving Austin means serving you. back to Austin Faith Dialogue. We're talking today on our program about fatherhood, parenting, relationship of father to family to children. One of my favorite biblical stories is the one that Jesus told about the father. A lot of people call it the prodigal son, but I, I think it more in terms of the father. And I like the story because it says to the father, the father says, uh, okay, my boy, <laughs> you're going to take off. All right, go in peace. And the son takes it all and, uh, we all know the story. He, um, his immaturity leads him to blow the whole thing. But what I like about it, and the image that I've, I've kept with me, and I, I feel this towards my father uh, living in Seattle, Washington. Your dad's 80, uh -huh. we'll be 80. Uh -huh. My dad's 84, and um, I, I, he's always there. We brought that up at the uh, top of the program, the, the parent who's there for you. Even at 84, I sense my father's yeah. always there. And that story that Jesus told, the father is there waiting. The son comes back, and he doesn't say, well, you really blew it, son. You made a big mistake. Uh, the son says, uh, I have no right to be your son. And the father claims that relationship, always that relationship. And I think that's such a great teaching tool for us to have an image of the way God is mm -hmm. and, and an image of the way that we can live out our, our relationships and family life of being there. Uh, before we took the break, Don mentioned a little bit about um, leadership. I think, Jiwu, you brought it up. And we talked about leadership and stimulating the children to think. How about leadership in terms of letting the the child go um, i must confess i'm not real good at that but how do you how does a father do that type of thing jenny how can a father uh, help his children to to move on now you have uh, other siblings in your family i have an older brother yeah um he's not living with us anymore he's married now but um one thing that my father's really he, he's just been i think the best thing about a father is the presence um and he he set the boundaries and he he guided me and he's taught me a lot, um, especially um, since I'm going to be in the workforce, which isn't, I mean, since the women are trying to gain equal rights in the workforce, um, I've earned, I've, I've had a lot of his influence from his experience. And I, I see that the father is guiding not only the son to take over, but the daughter as well. It's, it's not just going to be the sons that are going to be leading. What kind of messages has your dad given to you, encouraging you to, to take over, to become a, a leader in your own right? Oh, it's always been, you, you can do what you want to do. Um, if, if you had an interest in something, he always, you know, pushed me towards that. But if I lost interest, he didn't push too hard. He just, he let it go. And it was just that he was always there and he stood firm. But, you know, he, he made sure I was... I had some structure in my life and, and that is what I think kept me going and and taught me the basic right from wrong and, and was there whenever I, I needed direction. Uh, encouraging you to um, get an education. Oh yeah. To go on. Uh, mm -hmm. you, your goal is to do what? Um, I'm looking into c communications of some sort, um, photography as of right now, but um, that's one thing Dad always pushed you know, schoolwork. You always had to make sure. And he was always there to help. 
um, I'm not very good at math, and my dad is, and he's always been there, you know, whenever I needed help in math, and a lot of times I didn't take him up on it, and um, now I look back, I wish I would have, but um, it, it was a lot of, that, that he was always there, and I knew he was there, and if worse came to worse, I, I could go to dad, but I always, I also learned from him that you can do it on your own, and I think that's where I got it from, is I wanted to do it on my own, I didn't want help, and, and I... I got a lot of that from my dad. I mean, I knew when to ask for help when I needed it. Hasn't Jenny raised another issue, Don, that I think is important, is that particularly for the young female, mm -hmm. uh, in years past, the young female wouldn't think just in terms of education and going on and becoming a part of the workforce and equal rights for women in the workforce, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's an exciting dimension that's been happening in our society. But a father who's saying to her, you can do these things. Right. The role of a father in relationship to a his daughter is really an important and crucial role, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what else can you say about that? Well, I think, you know, the father, as well as the mother, in terms of encouraging their kids, giving them the, a sense of self-esteem, I mean, we, we know that that's real important in, in our development, that, that we have to feel confident, competent human beings. And I think that's a role fathers play. I mean, typically it's been a lot on the male side in terms of the fathers teaching their, their sons to play different sports or, but, or, or um, you know, teaching them how to swim, for example. I mean, they're developing a competency and a skill, and that translates over into life because then you feel good about yourself. Say, I, I can do something that I didn't do before. I can swim. You know, mm -hmm. and the excitement that a kid has when they want to show off how they can ride a bicycle before their parents. And so, uh, but I mean, that, that's equal. And mothers or fathers can, can do that kind of teaching. But, but I think, uh, you know, we've seen typically that it's the father in terms of getting out and doing some of these physical skills with their, with their children. But I'm wondering also, and, and correct me if I'm wrong in this, that I think it's really crucial in the relationship between a father and a daughter, mm -hmm. that the father encourage the daughter and model for the daughter what Jenny said, mm -hmm. that you can do whatever you want. If you want to do math, you can mm -hmm. do math, huh? Mm -hmm. And that you have to believe that you can do math. If you want yeah. to play ball, you can play ball. You know, you can... Be, yeah, a along with that too, it's real important how the father interrelates or reacts to the mother in the household because again, that's role modeling. If the father puts down the mother or how, mm -hmm. how they handle conflict, that's real important because the kids are watching that. So not, I mean, the father can, yeah, sure, they can do this training and teaching, but, but they're also there in being watched every day by the kids on, on how that father treats other women, mm -hmm. namely the mother right. in this case. And so that's, that's real important, real important. Uh, Gee, well, what about your dad? What are ways that he said to you, uh, uh, now you're going to be moving on? He gave you some tremendous uh, encouragement, I think, when he encouraged you to, to leave your homeland and come to Texas Lutheran College and start your freshman year there. What are some of those signals that your dad gave to you that, that you were growing up and becoming a, a person, an adult in your own right, and giving you that type of freedom to move on? Well, my dad always pushed me when it came to ed education. You know, I always made sure that uh, I did well in school. And uh, as I got older, he always told me, you know, you have to work hard for anything. And even if you don't get what you want, keep trying. He always told me, you can't get what you want when you want it, always. You can't always do that. And if, even if you don't get what you want, tr keep trying and trying. And always be straight with people. You yeah. know, tell people the truth. Speak to them the truth uh -huh. and let them know where you are. Yeah. When you left your country to come to Texas and start college at Texas Lutheran College, what were you thinking of? How did your father go with you? Because in a sense, we've talked about the presence of a father, and yet you at a very young age left to be enrolled in college. How, how did those uh, elements that your father had given you, how did they go with you? How did you take them with you? Well, when I came here, I was still dependent on my father for lots of advice and stuff like that. So it was, it was a little rough. I had to call him like every month or so. Mm -hmm just to hear his voice. Sure. And, uh, but as, as I stayed here, I came to realize that most of what he was telling me in my early years was right. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes I didn't listen to it, but I realized that what he was saying was right. You know what they say to you? Confession is good for the soul, you know? So I think that's typical of all of us. We can remember when we didn't listen to our parents and like Jenny was saying, wow, I wish I listened to my dad when he said math was important. You love math. You're good at math. Tell me about it. Was your dad the one who encouraged you to, to study math and work hard? Well, I've always loved math since first grade, and my dad always encouraged that. And uh, he always made sure that uh, I did well in math. 
And sometimes when I needed help, he made sure that I had the help that I needed. Don, I'm, I'm thinking about Jiwa as father far away from him. Mm -hmm. What about those kids, both Jenny and Jiwa mentioned that it's important to them, that presence of a father. Mm -hmm. And I think we want an Austin Bate dialogue today. We really want to hold that up in front of the viewing audience. That, that presence of the father is important. Right. But if that's not possible, what is it that the father can do to help prepare the child? And how can the child, from the child's point of view, hold on to some of those teachings? What are some techniques that can be done that can help a family uh, I'm thinking particularly rituals, but, but what do you think about? I think of the, that a, a father, and, as well as the mother, we really need to focus and live on the, in the present um, because the child is going to have the memories to always hold on to. In a sense, that's the presence. Um, you know, if, if tragedy strikes and the father goes away, I mean, you, you want to have that child leave these memories. So I, I really try to concentrate and Sure, we can plan for the future, but I, I like to live each day as if it was going to be my last day. Now, I don't always accomplish that, but I think that's real important. And that's not being said in a morbid sense, but in a sense, if, if this was my last day, would I do this the same way? I think I would change. I'd be different, and I'd try to be more loving, more kind, the way I could be. And, and so if we live in the present, and I think just, just concentrate in the present, I think, and even if the father's absent, I mean, you know, we can write, phone calls, you know, there's lots of things we can do to maintain a, a presence. Not an overbearing presence, but a presence that, that you're always there. And I think that's a comfort, and I think I've, I've heard both Jenny and G. Wall say that, that, that that's a comfort, knowing that they'll be there. And they might not be there at the dinner time table mm -hmm. necessarily all the time, but they're, they're there, there's a presence. And, and so if, if the father is, is, has died, I think hopefully the, the memories will be, will be good memories, and they'll hold on to that. Yeah, I like that idea that these days are precious days, and that we don't have each other forever. And that when we have one another, that we want to fill these days with that sense of, uh, of the gift of life and what we can share with one another. And you've shared with us. It's been good to have you in Austin Bay Dialogue. I want you viewing audience to know that these young people were a little nervous about this whole thing and wondering how they'd come across. And I encourage Jenny because uh, she's gonna be a communication major and even if she's interested in taking still photos, I think it's important to know what goes on in this, this type of thing on television. And you did a super job and we, uh, we're thankful for Reagan High School. And you tell the people back there that they've got a good representative in you, Jenny Malo. Exactly. And Jiu Abdullah, we're gonna wish you well as you uh, continue your studies at the University of Texas. And I think for both of you, and this comes from my heart, that it's important for you to have that spiritual reality, that spiritual presence of your father. And for those fathers who are watching this program, it is my hope that you realize what a gift you are to your children and what you have to share with them. And that as you live out your life and your relationship with God and with those around you, that you are sharing with your children the treasures that are eternal. We wish for you blessed parenting. Thanks for watching Austin Faith Dialogue. Be with us next week and peace be with you always. Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7627.